Hello, good day, dear students. Today, in a series of lectures related to microbiology, we are going to study about sterilization. This is one of the very, very important aspect of the subject microbiology. Sterilization, the word, you must have heard it very on and often in a day-to-day -day language. And for a layman, the sterilization in general means a clean thing or a clean material. But it is not always so. There is a lot of difference between material being clean and material being sterile. So, let us discuss the scientific meaning of sterilization, its applications and various methods used for sterilization. So, to start with, let us define what is sterilization. Sterilization, basically, it is a process. And in that process, what is achieved is, we are getting a material or a matter free from microorganisms. When we define free from microorganisms, it means that the microorganisms are either killed or they are removed. Now, not only microorganisms, but here I would like to also mention the endospores which are formed by microorganisms. So, you can say that sterilization refers to any process that removes, kills or deactivates all forms of life. Deactivate means it cripples that metabolically as well as reproductively and hence it cannot grow. The specific mention of endospore is always done when we define sterilization because endospores are very heat resistant structures which are formed by certain species of bacteria and these endospore forming bacteria they are present in environment they are present in dust they are present in soil and they are present on our body also so sterilization will mean a kind of a germ free material or a matter that material will not have any living form of any kind when i say any kind it means all types of living organisms are killed they are removed or they are deactivated well with this definition there are certain similar terms which needs to be mentioned and which needs to be studied in detail. What are these terms? For example, we have already defined sterilization. Sterilization, remember, it is a process and the material which is undergoing that process becomes sterile. So, sterile will be the word used for some material or a matter. It can be the medium, it can be say for example, scissor used by a doctor or it can be the knife which is used in surgery 
or it can be even bandages. The point is that whatever the material undergoes a process of sterilization becomes sterile. Another word is sterilant. Sterilant is an agent by which the process of sterilization is being carried out. And this sterilant can be either a physical agent or a chemical agent which is used to either kill or to remove. When we say remove, I specifically mean that it is being removed by a process which we will study in detail at a later stage that is by filtration. So, sterilant is an agent. Okay. Now, similar to sterilization, I would not exactly similar, but many people use the same different word with the which carries slightly different meaning, but they do use this word in the same context. For example, disinfectant. Disinfectant is being used by every individuals at their home to clean their home, to clean the hospital, to clean the environmental things. And this term is specifically used to kill the organisms which are disease causing, that is pathogens. So when we remove or kill the pathogens, that process can be included in a disinfection and the agent is known as a disinfectant. Remember, sterilization and disinfectant, they are two different processes. Disinfectant is restricted to removal of pathogens, while sterilization is a process where the removal of all kinds of life form is being done. And then antiseptic. Antiseptic is something similar to disinfectant, but this is being used on a human body. It is used to remove the pathogens from body surfaces. For example, when you go to doctor and doctor is intending to give you an injection, a drug by injection, then he cleans the site of a puncture by using alcohol. So that is antiseptic. The main difference between disinfectant and antisepsis, disinfection and antisepsis is disinfectant is used for non-living materials to clean or to remove the organisms from non-living things like table. That is, or a floor of a hospital. That is where we use disinfectant. Disinfectant cannot be used on our body because it is going to be injurious for the body itself, for the skin. So, antiseptics are those chemical compounds, usually chemical compounds, which are used for our human body, for human disinfections or antisepsis. Now, let us come to the importance of sterilization. Sterilization is a very important from several angles. First, let us use it from the viewpoint of medical sterilization. Sterilization will definitely prevent the growth of disease or I would say spread of the disease or it will control the growth of microorganisms thereby prevents the spread of the disease. Because 
any medical device which is used and since that medical device is always exposed to environment and the organisms are always present in environment that device is contaminated so if that device is not sterilized or in some cases disinfected then the microorganisms can infect the patient or the person who is under knife or person who is being operated so if you use a sterile product then there is a very negligible chances of contamination and thereby it prevents the spread of disease second important point is it also prevents double surgeries double surgeries is in the sense that if unsterilized equipment is used then it may lead to certain infections contamination of the wounds or what we call it as a post operative infections and when a person is infected during such procedures at that time his stay in hospital is prolonged as well as he may have to undergo a second surgery to stop the growth of the contaminants so this is costly and in many cases it may be a life threatening complications complications this was in relation to the hospital or from a clinical side as far as laboratory is concerned that is when a technician is working or where a microbiologist is working then the safety of that particular individual is also very important and hence when a person is working in a laboratory he should be using sterile materials sterilization of various equipments can be done either by flaming or by insulination or by using the sterile material which has been sterilized either in autoclave or hot air oven clear so in laboratory also the sterilization is necessary third important thing is in laboratory itself when we try to grow the organisms artificially in culture media that culture media has to be sterilized previously before its use that is when we formulate a culture media for growing one particular organism or when we formulate a medium like say for example nutrient agar medium in which we want to cultivate the organisms from the specimen collected from a patient then that medium has to be sterile so any media or broth either agar media or a broth or any other type of media which is being used has to be sterilized prior to its usage so from two angles first one is the safety of a technician and second one accuracy and the validity of the microbiological test if you use contaminated materials contaminated media then your results are compromised your results may guide you very falsely you get a uh, different kinds of growth and that may lead to certain problems next is pharmaceutical industries sterility is also very important in pharmaceutical industries and because of contamination i am using this word very frequently contamination i hope you know the meaning contamination is the 
प्रेजेंस ऑफ अनवांटेड ऑर्गेनिजम्स प्रेजेंस ऑफ अनवांटेड ऑर्गेनिजम्स इन अ मटेरियल और इन अ बॉडी सो इन फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्रीज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ दीज काइंड ऑफ अनवांटेड मटीरियल्स may lead to loss of productivity specifically when there is a contamination in a fermentation process then it may contaminate the final products it may give a problem during the third stage that is the recovery of the product then the presence of contamination or a contaminant in the product may lead to its deterioration or what we call it is a degradation of the product and in many cases if the contamination is by viruses or phages it may lyse the cells cells through which the fermentation is being carried out so the lysis of culture would take place as a result the process of fermentation will stop so in a pharmaceutical industry also this is very essential sterilization last but not the least in certain industries like food industries in certain processes like canning the food which is placed or which is sold in the market the ready made food or certain other fruit products they are sterilized or i would say they are treated in a such a way that that shelf life will be for few days to months like pasteurization of a milk no doubt pasteurization is not equivalent to sterilization but pasteurization will increase the life of a milk by few days otherwise the milk will spoil immediately similarly in canned foods the time and temperature depending upon the type of the food which is being used is treated either with dry or a moist heat so all these applications of sterility are very very necessary and if one understands the importance of sterilization he can very well as a microbiologist he can very well carry out his duties in laboratory or as a technician or as a scientist in various industries so this was the importance of sterilization now there are two other important words which i would like to mention here is septic aseptic two words septic and aseptic septic means presence of pathogenic microorganisms in tissues or in our body which leads to sepsis sepsis basically means pus formation putrefaction so when a pathogenic organism is there in tissues then it will multiply it will grow and will lead to sepsis antiseptic means a substance a chemical substance usually a chemical substance which prevents the sepsis which prevents the process of sepsis then there are two other important words bacterio static and other one is bactericidal bacteriostatic static means to stand still so bacteriostatic means it is a process whereby the inhibition of bacterial metabolism takes place i am using the word inhibition inhibition of metabolism takes place so the cell becomes dormant or inactive for a time period till there is an influence of a sterilant 
और डिसइंफेक्टेंट और एंटीसेप्टिक बट एज सुन एज द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ दीज केमिकल और फिजिकल एजेंट द एक्शन ऑफ फिजिकल एजेंट इज स्टॉप द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन गोज डाउन देन दीज बैक्टीरियल स्टेट मटीरियल्स विच हैव बीन ट्रीटेड बाई बैक्टीरियोस्टेटिक एजेंट्स दैट वुड अगेन द माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम वुड अगेन स्टार्ट ग्रोइंग बिकॉज इट इज इनहिबिशन इट इज नॉट अ किलिंग द ग्रोथ इज इनहिबिटेड इनहिबिटेड मीन्स इट इज स्टॉप टेम्पररीली टिल दैट एजेंट विच इनहिबिट द ग्रोथ इफ दैट इज रिमूव और इफ इट इज डायल्यूटेड then the growth will again begin in contrast to this the process which is known as a sidel bactericidal or a sidel agent that can be physical or a chemical agent which would kill the organisms it would kill the organisms and when i use the word kill it means the organism is dead a dead material or a dead organism cannot be revived again and therefore bactericidal procedures are more better as compared to bacteriostatic procedures sidel is a term which we use bactericidal or insecticidal is a term which we use when a material is treated with some agent which will kill the organisms so this is about bactericidal and bacteriostatic now this table shows difference between sterilization and disinfection there are many differences between the two as i have already discussed earlier sterilization is means complete removal of any kind of life either killing either by killing or by physical removal while disinfection means simply the killing of pathogenic organisms there are other differences which you should remember now coming to a very important aspect that is mechanism of killing of microorganisms what do you mean by mechanism of killing of micro this is also known as mode of action of either physical or chemical agent mode of action means how in different ways a organism can be killed and there are approximately five different modes of action of microorganisms the first one is the denaturation of proteins proteins are vital molecules proteins are important macromolecules in all cells they are responsible for either structure or the function that is they act as enzymes they are important metabolically to carry out certain reactions so these proteins if they are denatured what do you mean by denatured denatured is the word which means d means this destroy or absence nature the original nature nature here means the structure and the function the quaternary structure or tertiary structure of the protein molecule is distorted and you know that enzymes they function through their active sites and the active site is built up by the three dimensional configuration of a polypeptide chain there are various bonds which keeps that particular structure intact and 
in presence of certain agents physical or chemical these proteins are denatured means they lose their original nature and when their nature is lost they lose the ability to function structurally or to catalyze any reaction hence the cell would face its death second important mode of action is the interference of protein synthesis you must be knowing that protein is being synthesized in the cell by a process which is known as translation what happens in translation is all three different types of rna mrna rrna and trna at different levels they along with certain proteins that is ribosomal proteins would synthesize a peptide chain the process is known as translation the translation means the information which was present in mrna is now being converted into the chain of protein and the information present in rna was originally de derived from dna by the process known as transcription so whenever there is an interference in protein biosynthesis that protein will not be formed and since the protein will not be formed as i had told you earlier that proteins are a very vital molecules they are very important macromolecules of any cellular system third important mode of action is interruption of dna synthesis or the repair dna is basically a master molecule of a cell it controls all activities of the cell and how does the dna controls it dna is having or i would say it is made up of you know it is made up of nucleotides polynucleotides poly means many many different types of nucleotides basically four but these nucleotides are arranged in a particular sequence along the length of the dna and that would lead that would what we call it as a gene along with the structural elements and the controlling elements these genes or the dna which are made up of polynucleotide can be destroyed can be damaged by various agents and what happens is that this dna passes on the information which is present in the form of atgc four letter word from dna the information is passed on to rna and from rna it is translated to proteins so dna you can say is transcribed to rna if the dna is damaged if the dna is destroyed then from the basic root level the transcription will not take place and therefore translation will not take place thereby all the cellular activities will come to stand still it will halt so interruption of dna synthesis or repair is very important now how the interruption of dna synthesis takes place or dna synthesis when i say here it means dna replication whenever the cell whenever the bacteria let us say for example 
divides by binary fission from a parent cell two daughter cells are formed and the dna from a parent is passed on it makes its copy another exact carbon copy is being made and that copies original plus the new one dna replicates semi conservatively so one strand of the dna will be new other will be the old in both the cases and these both the copies of the this dna is passed on to daughter cells now if the synthesis means replication of the dna is stopped then naturally the genetic material inheritance will not be passed on to the daughter cells and thereby the growth will stop repair of the dna during the process of dna replication there are certain mistakes which are being made or due to the damaging effects of radiations or chemicals the nucleotides present in dna can be damaged structurally or by its particular sequence it may be either deleted or certain polynuclear certain nucleotides can be added also in short when this sequence is disturbed by either of the ways the message is not properly transcribed and translated so both the ways either during its replication or during its repair if the dna is damaged in some way then the organisms cannot survive fourth one oxidative damage of the cells oxidative damage means this occurs when we heat the cells when the cells or the cells material is being heated at a very high temperature oxidation will take place that is burning insulination Fla example is flaming of the wire loop this will lead to burning or total oxidation of the cell the cells or the material which is being heated up will be converted to ash so this is known as oxidation and the last one blast mode affection is disruption of cell membrane when we were studying about the cell structure i told you the importance of cell membrane it is semi permeable uh, or i would say it is selectively permeable membrane the selectivity selective semi permeable membrane is due to its particular structure and the structure of cell membrane is basically a lipopolysaccharides it is a bilipid layer having two tails hydrophilic and hydrophobic the structure can be described as fluid mosaic structure so the presence of lipids presence of carbohydrates as well as various different types of proteins membrane transport proteins makes a cell membrane a structure which is vital for the cells because it will permit the selective passage of material inside and outside the cells now if there is a disruption of cell membrane disruption means either structurally or functionally whatever it is either breakage lysis or the damage to the proteins any of these things takes place then the cell membrane functions will not be carried out properly so 
that is called disruption of cell membranes so in nutshell whatever the agents which we will study for sterilization and disinfections these will act in one of the following five different ways that is will have their mode of action which falls into one of these five categories that is reception of proteins interference of protein synthesis interruption of dna synthesis or its repair oxidative damage of the cells and lastly differentiation or uh, distortion disruption of cell membranes so these are the various mode of actions in this diagram which is adjoining to this text shows the three dimensional structure of protein this is a normal protein and this normal protein when either because of heat or because of presence of certain chemicals then it is denatured this is was the original nature and when in presence of certain agents there is a denaturation this is the way denaturation then what will happen that its functionality will be reduced damaged or lost this is the example of action of certain radiations on these are the nucleotides nucleotide consisting of base either purine or pyrimidine attached to ribose sugar and having a phosphate groups so when they are exposed to such polynucleotides when they are dna that is to be very specific when the dna is exposed to radiations then there are certain changes which are being taken place these changes will disrupt the dna functions so these are the mode of actions of various agents next comes the factors affecting the efficacy of sterilization and disinfection efficacy you can say efficiency so what are the factors which affects the efficiency of sterilization efficacy of sterilization the there are various various factors many factors but few prime important factions or some of the very important fact factors which influences the sterilization is the contact time how much time is being used for or how much time is being a material exposed to physical or chemical longer the time naturally better will be the sterilization or disinfection but that does not mean that you will use the longer time period which is more than needed because it will be very expensive it will not be cost effective as well as it may damage the material which is to be sterilized then various physico chemical environment for example ph of this material or the ph of the system in which that material or a microorganism bacteria or other things are suspended so ph on extreme sides will help a better sterilization presence of organic material when there is a more amount of organic material this will mask the matter to be sterilized it will mask it means it will shield 
this presence of organic material will organic matter will shield the other compound like proteins or dna other things or the cells itself and thereby protecting them so more the organic material present in the environment or in the medium more difficult will be the sterilization then temperature higher the temperature better it is for sterilization and disinfection types of microorganism when we talk about types of microorganism it means that whether the organisms are existing in vegetative stage or they have some special structures like endospores cyst etc and even if they are in a vegetative cell the genetic nature of the cell itself is very important because some of the organisms are bit resistant as compared to others it means some of the cells are highly delicate and they will be killed immediately while others that requires a long contact time as well as the long higher concentration of chemicals number of microorganisms this is also known as a load when we say load means how many organisms are present in that matter, matter or material to what a degree the contamination has taken place in the material which is to be studied higher the contamination means higher the load of microorganism you will require a higher concentration and higher time and higher temperature for its sterilization and finally the composition of the material to be sterilized because either by chemical or by physical matter that is by heat the material requires to be penetrated by these agents only surface treatment is not enough many times the core of the material the agent should be able to reach to the core to the center of the material which is going to be sterilized now type of material when i say some materials maybe it is enclosed some in some shield or in some uh, one way or the other either by polythene or by paper or by clothes all these things they definitely affect the process of sterilization and disinfection now when we have finished when we have understood regarding the basics of sterilization what is sterilization what is the importance why it is needed what are the mode of actions of various agents next is the methods of sterilization now when we discuss the methods of sterilization broadly we divide these methods into two headings into two titles first one is physical methods and the second one is chemical first one is physical methods of sterilization and the second one is chemical method physical methods of sterilization again can be subdivided into heat radiation and filtration heat radiation and filtration that is 
the physical way of sterilization while in chemical methods it can further be divided into sterilization by gas and the second one is use of liquids to sterilize so gaseous sterilization and liquid sterilization that is disinfectants now this chart explains you in brief the methods of sterilization oblique disinfection see here physical methods and this is chemical methods the third aspect which has been written here it is something the mix of the two physico chemical methods certain methods they are devised or they are the taking the integrated approach both the things they do play a role in that so that is known as a physico chemical methods now physical methods that includes sunlight heat vibrations radiations and filter five things sunlight heat vibration then radiation and filtration sunlight we know it we will be discussing where it is being used then heat it can be dry heat or it can be moist heat moist heat means steam and dry heat means just by heating by oven or by incineration radiation can be ionizing or non ionizing radiation and filtration filtration by using different filters these methods use of heat or radiations they make use of physical agents and here the organisms are killed they are killed while in case of filtration the use of these methods by say for example earthenware filters asbestos filters sinter glass filters or membrane filters these are the materials from which the filters are being made so these methods simply remove the organisms it removes the organisms we are neither killing nor inhibiting in this method that is of filtration we are removing separating the live organisms from the matter it means matter is being cleaned off like we remove the dust from the home we dust the materials our windows our doors or for that example if there is a file of these there is a books on the bookshelves we have to dust them because whatever the dust which is on that file or windows or on the bookshelves that has to be removed that is known as a dusting so we are removing the dust here we are removing the organisms no doubt we cannot see them but by using the filters we can remove these organisms which are beyond our observation beyond our resolution of the eyes they are still there and for filtration what is required is the material has to be passed through these filters and therefore it is only applied for liquid materials you cannot use filtration for petri dish sterilization of petri dish or you cannot use filtration for certain material made from metals or textiles that is any solid materials cannot be sterilized by filtration only liquid materials which can easily pass off through the pores of the filters they are sterilized by filtration and in chemicals there are liquids which are being used either as a bactericidal or bacteriostatic agents 
or there are gases gases like formaldehyde ethylene dioxide ethylene oxide and plasma so these will definitely lead to the bacteriostatic or bacteriostatic agents